since it's fall and a lot of you ask how I use my pumpkins, what the outdoors are looking like. I talk about taking plants in and my porch is still full. I thought this would be a great time to bring you along on a little on a little front porch fall tour and the walkway leading up to it. We'll see where all we go. But uh, I love to bring you along on these tours. I love to show you why I grow so many of the pumpkins, which you can see down here. You know, a lot of these varieties, they're squash or pumpkins. They're not all just pumpkins. There's a lot of unique ones. And I just love to try different ones every year. And you know, some years I get a lot of pumpkins, some years I don't. You never know what I'm gonna get. And that's, that's okay. You know, this year I didn't get some varieties that I really wanted, but I got a lot of others. So all of these I grew, and this is why I grow them. It's so I can set them all around my front walks. It's so I can just use them to display and just enjoy. So as you lead up to the front walk into the front porch here, you're gonna see, I just place different sizes randomly all together. And now that we're kind of getting close to October, I'm starting to get out. I have some terracotta jack-o'-lanterns and I just put like battery operated candles in them this time of year. And I just intermix these usually amongst the pumpkins because I just find it fun. I do, I just find these fun. I, I like to do, I don't really get into Halloween decorating, but there's something about a terracotta pumpkin. You know, it's just like something I would have in the garden anyway, because it's terracotta and I love to plant things in terracotta. You could actually plant these if you wanted to, but I love them just with, you know, you can set them down here and just intermix them. Now this border will eventually change as these boxes grow bigger, but until they do, I can fit a lot of things like this in here. Now I recently did a reel showing some of my favorite pumpkins to grow or squash this year. Like the mellow yellow, it has that creamy yellow exterior. I love this green striped Kusha. I had a lot of these this year. Polar bear, I didn't have as many of, but it's still a fun one. And when you intermix all of them, they just look unique. So I've started taking some of my plants in. You can see behind me, some of them I have not taken in. So these are two large blue agave. I have a pup growing over there that's a lot smaller. This is the main plant and I'll have to dig this up, put it in a plastic nursery container and take it into my plant room here really soon. But over the summer, these have just really filled in with this annual artemisia underneath them. Uh, silver bullet artemisia, I think maybe. This agave actually grew quite a bit this year. Eventually I want it to be the same size so these two containers mirror each other. But until then, we're slowly getting there. So let's move a little closer to the front door. Mesquite de Provence, I have to admit, is one of the first pumpkins I grew like eight or 10 years ago. And it's one of my favorites. As the season goes on, it gets its more ripe color. It becomes all that brown color and it gets a powdery look to it. It's supposed to, and I love that. And again, mixed with a bright, you know, like a Turk's turban here. These are great to eat, but they're really just a fun, bright color. And you look underneath, look at that beautiful cap on it and some of that striping. I think it's just fun to go through and see all the unique ones all the way up and down the line. I, I just can't get over how many and how much variety there is. And you're gonna notice, I don't have as many of the traditional like Kentucky field. It still is putting on its ripening color, but I did plant some of those this year. I don't always, but I do enjoy them. And I even, you know, Long Island cheese, I didn't get as many of those this year as I wanted to, but these are great for stacking, which you're gonna see up here by my front door. I love to take something that's a little bit more flat, which you can see here. When I say flat, you can see they have a, here it's a little bit more flat than it is tall. So it's great for stacking. Same with this Mesquite de Provence. Those are great for stacking too. So I have a small stack here. You guys always ask me, how do you stack your pumpkins? There's no right or wrong way. There is no secret trick. There is nothing sticking these together. They are just literally, I take pumpkins into, and I just push them around until they somewhat fit. Now I know you're gonna say, well, wait, I have wind. I couldn't do that. I have a lot of wind. Pumpkins are pretty heavy. And even this, it's not perfect, but during storms, strong winds, this has not moved. Now, the reason I don't put, say, a pole down in them or something that sticks them together, if you puncture a pumpkin, that's when it's gonna start possibly rotting. Sometimes they can self-heal, but usually they rot. And so I don't do anything to them other than just look for ones that kind of fit on top of each other, are somewhat level, and then go on from there. This is on top of an antique, it's a found kind of architectural salvage limestone. I have two of these little columns and I love them. They're just such great places to set either a container over the summer with like an agave or in the fall pumpkins. It's just, this is the entry, but then it goes right into my front porch. So I like to have something special here. You may remember recently I had a video posted about 
this wreath. So you can see this is a big wall. And sometimes on a front porch, you don't need to have anything. You don't. But this is right where you come around from my side entry. And it's just such a big white wall that if I put nothing there, it looks really empty. So I found the grapevine wreath for at a garage sale for two bucks. And he said he would take a dollar. And I was like, okay, for a dollar, I will take it. And then I decided why not make it into a wreath that I can just enjoy. And so that's what this is. And the table, yeah, it's rusty. You know, I like some of my outdoor stuff. I get sometimes some people thinking it's a little weird, but I like my outdoor stuff to be sometimes rusty or chippy. Now, I may paint this eventually, but I don't know. I really don't mind it. But I filled it with some pumpkins, some gourds. Some years I have none to put there. This year I did. But you can see I got a lot of plants and I haven't taken them in yet. So that's what I think we should talk about a little bit. So on my front porch, a lot of my tropicals go. We have a lot of bird's nest ferns. This is, uh, this is Austral Gem variety. I love its glossy leaves and they're super sturdy. You can cut a couple of these and put them in a vase and they last for a long time. Um, I have different jade plants. I have, hello elephant ears. I have different philodendrons. I have miniature philodendrons, large philodendrons, even the miniature ones, they get large. I don't care what people say, they get large. But a lot, all of these, oh, this is another beautiful bird's nest fern. I love ferns. This is south exposure, but the front porch is deep enough that it stays very, and I mean very shaded during the day. So ferns love it up here. I'm just gonna sit as I talk to you. Ferns love it up here because they get bright light, but not full sun, which would scorch them for ones like this. So it does really well up here. I just have to keep them watered because that southern exposure means lots of wind and heat in the summer. So I have to make sure things stay nice and watered. Now, as we get into October, in Iowa, I live in zone 5B, which is southern Iowa, and we can start having a first frost date mid-October, maybe October 17, somewhere in there. I should look what this year. There's usually always a frost date where your first potential date for frost is of a year, no matter where you live. Ours is mid-October. By then, I want to have all my plants put away so they are protected, because if these get a hard frost on them, a lot of them would die or it would really hurt them. Even if they wouldn't die or if it would just really damage them, you don't want that to happen. On my coffee tables here, I removed the plant and I did, I put a Mesquite de Provence. Now you can see sometimes they don't have their full color on them and there's still that green color, but they will ripen to that more brown color with that powdery finish. This year, one of the things that was a total win for me, my hanging baskets, I really enjoyed them. The best one is actually here behind you a little bit, but you can see I put Kimberly Queen ferns because they're sturdy. They can take the Southern exposure. For a fern, that's amazing. Kimberly Queen is one that can take that more direct sunlight. And so they look really good here because a, a front porch with ferns hanging to me, that's what I grew up with. Mom still puts Boston ferns on her front porch. It's on the north. Now, what I did underneath them this year was different succulents. The fishhook Senecio, these are unbelievable. I have now taken cuttings of these. I show this in every video and I can't get over how easy it is. So I just keep doing it. These you can pit, put in any container or pot and they're just gonna start growing. So you can see, I did them here. You can see it also has some stringer pearls. You know, what a lot of these succulents, where we think they can be kind of hard indoors, they do really well outdoors because they're left alone more. Usually inside, we keep them too wet. We take too much care of them. Outside, the elements dry them out quicker, and they actually like that, especially when you do bare root, like I'm trying to do right now, where I just put, you know, one of these cuttings in a container. That's bare root, because I just cut it off and put it in. And they just will start growing, and then look, it turns into a growth. It's amazing. All these ferns, I do try to save them usually on certain years. They start getting so, like I start with small, like I wanna say four or six inch size plants when I plant them in the spring. You can see they get really big by the end of the year. I don't like to start with full growing hanging baskets year after year because I feel like they get too overgrown by the time we get towards the end of the season like this. So some of these, what I do is I split them in the fall, put them in separate containers and then take in smaller plants and they're easier for me to keep over the winter. When I take them in this large, it's just almost too many plants with all the other plants I take in. So I have to pick and choose, but I really do love them. Like these Salum philodendrons, these I save every year. You've seen I, the, some of the biggest kickback I've gotten in videos. In a nice way though, is people shocked on how I split these. I literally in the spring take them out of these containers. I chop them up. I whack them in half because I have to contain them. This is, you know, a year of growth and look how big it is. It has some water spots on it that I should wash off. I power washed recently and I think it got some droplets on it, but they get massive. And what's so easy about them is I put them in my plant room over the winter. I take them out and I put them in these, you know, stands here 
and they're just full on beauty. They don't have color and I know a lot of people say that, but what's great is they're easy for me. You know, with the amount I try to do on my own, it's sometimes as easy to find things that don't take as much care. So there's no deadheading. Watering is a little bit easier than certain annuals. I don't have to worry about a fertilizing schedule or anything. They're happy, they're easy, they're healthy. That's what I love. And of course, I put some pumpkins down around. You know, I love, I don't think this was Atlantic Giant. This was a different one. It's another giant one. And sometimes I don't get as big of ones because I let the plant give me as many as it can. When you want a huge, massive pumpkin, you usually have to trim off a lot of the other pumpkins. So the plant puts all of its energy into one large one. I don't do that. I want as many pumpkins as I can. So, and the thing is, even if we don't get as big of pumpkins as we want, we can make them look bigger. Like these mellow yellows I put up in urns and they just make them look a little bit bigger and stand out. You know, from the front porch, you can see them from further away. And I really like that. If you remember too this year, I had a saga in my front flower bed. The hydrangea I kept trying, they, I was trying bobos. And I have them in a lot of places at mom's at my house where they love full sun, but here they were just not doing well. And I think it's because the concrete was absorbing too much heat and it was passing that heat onto the plants and it was really scorching them. So instead I just recently have switched these out to Russian sage. And I did a variety that stays a little bit smaller, but what will be great about this is it's Southern exposure. It will do well in the full sun. The kitty is coming to say hello. Everyone, this is Patchy. You see her in videos a lot. Patchy is a love bug, just like Kip and she just loves the attention. But um, Russian sage is such a great option. Pollinators love it. It's not a native, but it works really well here. And it does really well in drought conditions once it's established, in full sun and things like that. So I'm excited about that. But what I do want to show you is the succulent planter I put together this spring. If you remember this spring, I did a video on a succulent planter here by my front porch. And a lot of these succulents are ones I keep year to year. And it had for various years in containers that I take in, take out. And this year I decided to put them, a lot of them together in one large container. And I, I gotta say, it has actually kind of exceeded my expectations. So usually my Echeveria like this one, you know, they get nice. But this year, since I put it in a larger pot like this, look how it blew up. And I think people forget, these all bloom. Echeveria bloom. A lot of these succulents bloom. And when they're happy, this had full sun, even though we were in a drought, I didn't really water it. If it rained, it watered. Once in a while, I maybe threw water on it, but I didn't really have to worry about it. Even things like the burrow's tail, which don't usually grow a lot for me, they've been doing super well. I, everything just kind of exploded. This I showed in that video from the spring. I just chopped it off. I cut off a piece from another succulent I had and I stuck it in. You can see it's happy, it's thriving, it has grown. All of these have grown, thrived, and really just found their place. And so I'm gonna take it all apart. I'm gonna save all the plants again individually. Who knows, maybe next year they'll end up here again. Now I know I've been a lot of talking and showing, but the thing is, I, I get excited about the seasons and I get excited about, I'm not someone that even though I love to garden, I don't mourn the loss of summer being over. I get excited for fall. So I recently took out my large agave. You know the huge one I have, it's massive. And I just stuffed the container full of miniature pumpkins. You saw I did this over at my mom's this year too. I think this is such a great way. You know, I happen to have a good bumper crop of the mini pumpkins this year. And you know what? Why just put a few bowls in the house? Why not make a pile of them? You know, since I grew them, they were free and it was easy to just be able to use them how I wanted to. That's why I grow pumpkins. So I don't have to worry about how many I use. So piled up, I have a grapevine wreath like you see I always use and it contains them. It gives kind of an edge that holds them in place. And you know, it's not as big of a display as the agave was, but it gives you a punch of color. And I always say, I'm excited when I don't have to water as much. So we were really dry this summer. Any of these pumpkins I put out, I don't have to water. So I fill a container with the pumpkins and it's easy going. So now before we end, before we leave, I have one more place I want to show you. It's one of my, it's just a favorite little pop of color at the front of my driveway. So let's go out there. On each side of my driveway, I put some limestone plinths and then some, they're not really antique, they're probably more mid-century, but cast iron urns, large ones. And usually I have some big, you know, summer display in them, but I had some great pumpkins this year that did decent. These, you know, giant pumpkins grew decent size for me. And I thought instead of putting a stack of pumpkins or trying to do a whole pile of them or trying to plant fall annuals in the water all the time, I did a normal grapevine wreath and I just put a massive pumpkin as a display piece. So there's one on each side of my driveway. They're a pop of color. They're so much fun and they're easy. So what I hope you get from this, inspiration, but I also hope you just get like excitement for the season. We have to enjoy and embrace and look forward to each season. 
Otherwise, it's just not exciting. So as always, thanks for stopping by. There's gonna be more to do.